Hey guys, I'm here to compare two watches. There are two different categories of watches, one being a dive and one being a chronograph, but uh, they are comparable in collectors, especially the beginning collectors, thinking of their first uh, luxury Swiss watch, I guess. Uh, one being the Tudor um, Black Bay. Oh, this is the first one actually uh, that was released in 2012, I believe. This is the one with the Eta movement inside. And uh, currently, of course, Tudor has come out with various variations, the last being, I believe, the F Black Bay 58. Uh, but this is a brand that has gotten a revival, especially in the US, in the last five years. Um, being a sister brand of Tudor, of course, it does have a good brand heritage. And of course, the Omega Speedmaster, which of course is also a brand that has taken an uptick in the last you know, 10 to 15 years, especially since uh, the movie GoldenEye was released in the mid-90s with the Seamaster. They've taken a big revival. And of course, with the George Daniel Coaxial and now Master Coaxial and Metas certified. But of course, the Moonwatch has always been a staple of the speed of the Omega brand since you know the moon landing of course so when a buyer you know looks into a watch I know it's hard to compare a dive as well as a you know a chronograph but that being said uh, you know they usually think of these two brands these two models actually uh, as watches to buy as their first and maybe only timepiece so I'm just going to go into the differences between these two watches as well as what I personally think would be a better watch. So going first of all, I think this is actually, this is the Omega Speedmaster um, a Sapphire Sandwich. This has a sapphire glass unlike the traditional one which has the uh, Hesalite crystal. You can still get the Hesalite crystal and this of course has a display case back and hence the, with also a sapphire glass, hence the name Sapphire Sandwich. Um, it goes in the pre-owned market around you know three to four thousand U.S. dollars, depending on papers, condition, and the year of make. Uh, this is the Tudor Black Bay. This goes up for a pre-owned less, um, probably a thousand dollars less. And the people who are in the less than five thousand U.S. dollar um, budget, uh, I would pres I would first of all recommend buying pre-owned, so you'll get more value for your for your. Um, for your money as well as I would go probably with these two brands probably an old Rolex or even Panerai if you're thinking of other brands to think about that being said um, the size of these two watches looking at these two watches right now you probably think that this is bigger but this is probably because of the camera distortion but this is actually 41 millimeters of the Tudor um, Black Bay uh, it is uh, 41 millimeters is the case size. It is 22 mi millimeters lug size. So if you want to change it to a bracelet, that is a 22 millimeters. And of course, it's an automatic uh, winding watch. Uh, this, on the other hand, the Speedmaster is 42 millimeters. Actually, one millimeter. Uh, the dial is actually one millimeter smaller. But that being said, it more it has a twisted you know lugs and it makes the lug size perf. Well, I would say perfect. More commonly used 20 millimeters. So if you want to switch for a, a, a bracelet, uh, for a strap or a NATO strap, um, you just need to get the 20 millimeters, which I have done here. Uh, the, the thickness of this watch is where I would say um, I prefer the Speedmaster. The Speedmaster is, I believe, 13.7 millimeters thick, especially if you take the one without the sandwich. It's a little thinner, but this the older versions is a little thicker. It's 14.7. It's pretty bulky compared to that of the Speedmaster. Um, that being said, uh, it does it is very sturdy. It's very strong, um, and uh, it does use going to the movements. This uses the um, initial ones. This is the one with the Eta movement in it. Uh, it's a 28-24. Um, movement which does have a good power reserve and it's pretty robust movement automatic winding this uses the um, manual wind 1863 you know, this is actually a more decorated 1861 so to speak uh, tried and true movement going back to a modified you know coming from the 321 
caliber moving to the 861 to the 1861 and as you can see here and I'll get that get to that in a second so that's another difference this is a manual wine has a 48 hour power reserve I believe this has a 40 hour power reserve on um, this on the automatic when it's fully wound um, the, going to the history of these two watches if you're into history of course Speedmaster has that you know basically it's the moon watch uh, what people say you know NASA being the first watch on the moon, all that stuff. I don't have to get into details. The Black Bay, actually, this one is does take vintage cues from the Tudor Submariner of the 1950s, um, but it's actually its own watch. This is actually, Black Bay is actually uh, a modern interpretation of the vintage Tudors with the, you know, the snowflake candy, as you can see here on the dial. But that being said, it's, you know, it is... A, it is it's his own watch so to speak and it, uh, now in 2018 it has so many iterations it's bringing out uh, its own line so to speak and step, stepping out of the shadows of Rolex going to the next part it's the bracelet the bracelet is a brushed bracelet and Tudor with the beautiful polished sides um, it does have a good clasp you can see the Tudor shield here sorry my gloves are pretty loose here but I'm just going to pull this out uh, it's hard to do it with uh, gloves here, but I'll try my best. And here we go. Uh, I do just easy clasp on, and voila! It is a very strong bracelet. Um, this one also comes with the bracelet sapphire sandwiches. I don't have it. I have it in bracelet right now, and I have it here. The bracelet. It's a very simple clasp bracelet with a polished and brushed finish. I would put that as a wash between the both the bracelets. But that comes to the next step which is the versatility of the watches. Um, I would give a um, edge to the Speedmaster there. You can see I, I can put it on any color bracelet. I think this is the best watch to, uh, to change straps with. Uh, be it maybe the Rolex Mariner might be the only other watch I can think of. But other than that, the Speedmaster can go with any strap, rubber, leather, NATO, and it'll look perfect on it. The Tudor, Submar the Tudor Black Bay does go with a couple of straps, but it is somewhat limited compared to the uh, what I call the Strap Chameleon and the Speedmaster. Going to an edge to the Tudor would be the water resistance. The water resistance is 200 meters, being a dive watch, of course. And um, it does say it on the bezel too, on, on the dial, sorry. Um, being a diver watch, it does have uh, no crown guards. And this one, of course, the Speedmaster has 50 meters water resistance. I would suggest not swimming with the Speedmaster. You can get it wet, but uh, other than that, it's not probably used as a chronograph. Um, the other advantage of the Tudor is the crown itself. The crown is actually a Tudor rose design. I like it. I, I know that I, I don't know about the modern ones. I believe it's a shield, but I like the old Tudor rose on the cr crown, and it's easier to use the crown on this one. Um, those who it's just easier to to wind, and it does have a nice bezel too, as you can hear there. Uh, that being said, the crown, the only issue with the Speedmaster, I would say, is the crown to wind it. It's, it is a little difficult because of the crown guards, um, and instead of the, because it's not a dive watch, but it's a chronograph, it does have that beautiful, um, uh, function of the chronograph. That being said, uh, the next, uh, advantage I would use the Tudor on is, the loom, the loom being a dive watch, this actually glows in the shark. One of the best looms of my collection is the Tudor. Um, it has the applied markers and it does have great super luminova. Um, I don't know if you can see it there, but it does light up pretty well. This has loom as well, but it's not as um, good as the loom of the dive Tudor watch if you're into loom. That being said, um, the uh, difference, major difference, and in much going to here is the case back here. The Sapphire Sandwich has a wonderful, you can see the movement, 
it has that beautiful screws you can see and the the beautiful brushed and finished finishing is seen beautifully on this 1863 movement um you can even see the uh let me see if the chrono is still running but yeah, when you turn the chronograph on if you can see the levers there there we go um the unfortunate thing about tudor as well as the rolex family because it's tool watches but it has the oyster plain uh no, no decoration at all just has that tudor logo on it if you go to, but get, even get a speedmaster um, it does have engravings on the back so i still give a case back much more advantage to the omega resale value uh the speedmaster if you buy pre-owned you're not going to lose any money especially for the limited edition you might even make money off of it the tudor also you might you might get the same money back but i would just say resale value, a little bit better on the speedmaster if you buy it pre-owned versatility both of them nowadays you can use anything as a dress watch under a suit but i would just say that the, the, the this speedmaster can be used for casual as well as as a dress ball if you wear it on a you know on a strap like here um it's a much better wear so overall uh coming to the advantages and disadvantages pros and cons of both the watches i would say uh the tudor is better in the sense of the 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 loom, the water resistance, of course, and the crown. The crown is much more uh, easier winding than than compared to the Speedmaster. But compared that to the advantage of the Speedmaster, the Speedmaster does have a better, I think, the better proportions. Um, it's you know it's tried since 1950s. It's still basically the same dimensions, 42 millimeters, less thick. Uh, it has a better movement, although the Tudor in-house movements are pr pretty good nowadays. It does have a, a better um, case back, of course, and it does also have you know a little bit better uh, resale value if you're just thinking about uh, value. It does have a better versatility as being used as a you know a dress watch, as well as a you know all around one piece watch. Uh, it is better on straps, uh, better strap selection, so to speak, a and you can get it in the better size. The lug size here is 20 compared to the 22 here. Um, so overall, I would say that if you're choosing one watch, everybody depends, you know, it depends on the person, but I would choose this watch, the Omega Speedmaster as your first watch. Um, but if you're preferring an automatic diver, of course, the Tudor Black Bay would be a better watch. The caveat here would be the Tudor, uh, Black Bay 58, which I have not seen in person, but I've heard good things about it. It's a smaller watch, smaller dimensions. That may might be a worthwhile, uh, rediscussion with the Speedmaster. But comparing the old Black Bays versus the Speedmaster, I think I would give the edge to Speedmaster. If you have any comments, just let me know. Uh, and if you agree or disagree, um, thanks for uh, watching this video. Thank you.